Okay, everybody. So today what we're going to do is we are going to find the solutions to a quadratic function using the quadratic formula. Now remember a quadratic function will have two solutions and um, those two solutions can be found using the quadratic um, formula. Now in cases where you have a perfect square binomial then you're only going to have one solution. So let's look at how we can use a quadratic formula to find solutions to a quadratic function. First of all, if you remember the standard form of a quadratic, so the standard form know why this is doing that, is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is the numerical coefficient on the square term, and it tells you which way the um, parabola or the graph of the function is going to be turned. Remember when a is positive, then the parabola is going to open upward, and if it's negative, then it's going to open downward. And then b is the numerical coefficient on the x term, and c is our constant term. Now, you need to remember that a, b, and c also include the signs that are associated with the number. So, if this is um, a minus sign in here, then that would be negative b. If it's a plus sign, it's positive b. But anyway, let's go over here and let's see how this all works. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out what our a, b, and c is. So we have a equals b equals and c equals. Now here, remember, there's not a per se quote unquote number in front of that um, squared term. So we imagine the number to be one. It can't be zero because zero times anything is just zero. So this is gonna have to be one. And because there's a negative here, it's negative one. So A is gonna be negative one. B is going to be the number and the sign. So it's gonna be negative five and C here is going to be just positive 1. So we know what a, b, and c is. So now let's go and let's take a look at the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula says that x is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All of that divided by 2 a. Now the only thing that we need to do is go back into this formula here and substitute the values of a, b, and c back into here. So let me go grab another color. Negative b. Well we have negative and here b is negative 5. plus or minus. Now I know some of you might be tempted to say, oh, okay, I have a negative there, all I have to do is just write the five. No, you need to write, if B is negative, you're gonna write the negative, and then you're gonna write whatever um, numerical coefficient B represents in the function, okay? So we don't fudge anything, we write what B actually is, plus or minus the square root of B squared well, b is negative 5, so that's negative 5 squared minus 4 times a is negative 1. Let me extend this a little more. And c is 1. All divided by 2a, and a is negative 1. So we have 2 times negative let's move that down a little bit. So now we go ahead and do all the math that's associated with it. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So this becomes positive 5 plus or minus the square root of 
Negative 5 squared is 25. And we have negative 4 times negative 1. That's positive 4. Times 1 is just 4. So we have plus 4 here. All divided by negative 2. So we keep going doing our math here. And we have 5 plus or minus the square root of 29 all over negative 2. Now some people seem to think that numbers like this shouldn't be in a solution. Well, why? Because a solution to a quadratic equation can be both complex numbers, those are the numbers with the I, as well as numbers that are real, such as this. Um, it, they can be rational numbers, such as 2, 3, 1 half, or they can be irrational numbers, such as the square root of 29. So, you know, they don't, everything doesn't always come out nice and neat. This is the real world, and in the real world, things don't always come out nice and neat. So, now that we know, um, we kind of have, like, have a template for what our solutions are going to be, let's see what they are. Now remember, I said you have two solutions. One solution, which we'll call x sub 1, is going to be found by subtracting in the numerator. So we take 5 minus the square root of 29 over negative 2. And the second one's going to be found through addition. So x sub 2 is going to be 5 plus square root of 29 all over negative 2. Okay? So when you're doing these in Connect Math, you need to look at your answer string to see um, if you have one, what your solutions are going to look like. So the next thing is, well, what do we do? Because we've got this negative sign here in the denominator, so what do we do with it? Well, if you have a multiple choice answer string, and that negative is not left in there, then you need to take that negative, you need to move it up to the numerator and distribute it through. In other words, we're taking negative, and we're doing this with it. We're multiplying it through the numerator. So we just moved it from here up to here. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to move this from the denominator up to the numerator. So we have, when we distribute this through, we've got one of the solutions being negative 5 plus the square root of 29. So we take this, we distribute it here, we get negative 5, we distribute it here, we get a negative times a negative, that's our positive. And it's 29, if I say 25, I misspoke, divided by 2. And here we have negative 5 minus the square root of 29 divided by 2. So those are our two solutions. Now, oftentimes you will be asked to write solutions in what is called a solution set. Now when we go to write solutions in a solution set, which are the curly brackets, remember we always go in numerical order from lowest to highest. And here, notice that our numerator here is going to be negative, which would make this number negative. And here our numerator would be positive, which would make this number positive. So when we write those, we want to write the negative solution first and then the positive solution. So when we go up here to write our solution set, and let's just kind of move this over a little bit. So our function, our original function was f of x equals, oops, don't know why this is an like today, negative x squared minus 5x plus 1. 
And the solutions for this that we figured out using the quadratic formula is negative 5 minus square root of 29 divided by 2. And the other one is, excuse the sloppiness of it, let me just try to make that just a little bit better for you. Sometimes this just does wonderful, and then other times it just doesn't do what I want it to do the way I would like for it to do it. So let's try it this way. We have we have negative five minus square root twenty nine divided by 2, a little bit, not much, and negative 5 plus square root of 29 divided by 2. And those are the two solutions in our solution set. So what happens is when we plug either of those numbers in for x back into our quadratic function, then when we do all of the math, then what's going to happen is this function is going to equal zero. So that's how you use a quadratic formula, and I hope this helps um, most of you. And uh, the next tutorial will be on completing the square. So talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.